Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Dwarven Tavern. I am Dr. Jeff Goins, your host for this review. And uh, we are going to continue the uh, Mutants and Masterminds review, uh, reviews uh, a little bit here. Uh, we have another book. I, I think it might be uh, the last one we have currently to do because we already did, yeah. Anyway, um, this is called um, the uh, Atlas of Earth Prime. And it goes for $44.95 from uh, Green Running and uh, uh, the wonderful folks at uh, uh, Green Running. <laughs> so it's Green Running, Green Running. Um, which is cool because they put out some good stuff. Uh, I doubt that they would be as uh, successful as they are if they didn't put out good stuff, but that, you know, I don't, I don't believe in resting in one's, on one's laurels, so uh, it, is, uh, it is totally the uh, a meritocracy here. And uh, so what is this book? Well, this is uh, the, uh, it, it's the Atlas of Earth Prime, which if we go here to the beginning, Earth Prime, known for years simply as the World of Freedom, started off small, I guess it got bigger. Just a single city on the eastern seaboard of the United States. The Freedom City source book, which we did earlier, established a number of things about the world outside the city's borders, but the rest of the world rated, still rated no more than a few pages of that book, barely a glimpse, which is true. This book uh, fills that gap, which is a worldview of uh, this this world and we have uh, in in the table of contents we've got uh, a few quite a few we've got four major uh, sections four major sections the Americas Europe the Middle East and Africa and Asia and the Pacific Rim which is which is very cool because it it's always helpful when you are immersed in the game. And I have, I have noticed on more than one occasion that when someone brings up a fantasy world that of their own creation, it's hard to get into that because you don't know the places, you don't know the, the regions, the locations, the dialects, the people, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, the society, the cultures, and, and what have you. But when you use an actual uh, analogy for Earth itself, you know where Europe is, or at least you should, and Asia and the Americas and so forth. South, North, North, South America, and Canada. <laughs> and uh, so, so this book actually brings that into play. It covers the entire planet and delineates what's there and what heroes are there and, uh, and so forth so it says in this uh, from sea to shining sea and this is the United States from sea to shining sea Buckner Ridge Tennessee Chicago Illinois Amboshir Louisiana uh, Farrowsburg Pennsylvania Midvale Kansas Mystery New Hampshire New Hampshire that's not a New Hampshire accent New York, New York, hey, that's more of a Bronx, but, you know, what, what are you going to do, huh? Uh, Red Rocks, Arizona, San Francisco, California, and Washington, D.C. And then, of course, it covers Canada, because that's, you know, North America. Uh, Mexico, the Caribbean, or the Caribbean, depending on your pronunciation and proclivities. Uh, Central America and South America which covers, you know, Central America is Belize, Costa Rica, El Salvador, and so forth. Uh, South America is Argentina, Bolivia, uh, Brazil, Chile, Chile, and so forth. Then, of course, you've got Europe, North, uh, Europe covering Northern Europe, Mediterranean, Western Europe, Central Europe. I mean, it goes, it goes through the whole thing. The whole thing being the planet is the thing. 
And uh, something else that they did that I thought was was really cool was uh, here on page three, they have the uh, the key to the heroes and villains that are actually on the front page, being uh, the big guy in the middle is uh, a, a character named Overshadow. And then you've got Professor Chiron and Yeti and so forth, which, if you remember, uh, Junior from the Heroes High, which the the Heroes High, Hero High, book is uh, 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 Junior is a is a young Yeti or Sasquatch, which are technically the same species. We think maybe I don't know if you're into cryptids or not, but uh, not not like Bitcoin. It's like uh, Bigfoot, B Bitfoot. <laughs> um, so I had to think of that. <laughs> it was like my gears were grinding kind of rusty today. So uh, it's got a, a really cool key. And uh, oh, and then another section I didn't even see here, uh, or didn't, I failed to, I didn't though because I'm mentioning it now. The ends of the earth, which is Antarctica, the Lost World, Subterra, Atlantis, Unison. Then it goes to an appendix. It's uh, 272 pages long. The book, uh, the Mutants and Masterminds books are all comic book sized. So I'm not, I've never been a real fan of books that were different size than all my other books. Uh, I know that's, that's a weird thing, but um, that's kind of how I roll. I like, <laughs> I like for things to be, I'm not OCD. I just prefer things to be a little more uniform. However, in this case, I will make an exception to them being a little bit smaller than the rest of the books because they're comic book size. And, you know, comic books, right? So, as we progress into this, it gives a worldview. Uh, of course, in the introduction, it talks about the United States of America and the various locations therein, like Embouchure, Embouchure, Louisiana, yo. Along the Gulf Coast, near the state border between Louisiana and Mississippi, is the town of Embouchure, one of many of the greater orbit of New Orleans and the Mississippi Delta, so forth and so on. And uh, it has a uh, hero like Lady Mamba, who is very obviously a voodoo princess or voodoo queen. And uh, then it goes to Farrowburg, Pennsylvania, and it gives a couple paragraphs, like four or five paragraphs, into each place. Um, New York City, it's got a Batman analogy who's called the Raven, an, alog an analog, not an analogy, uh, the Raven, uh, Patriot, then it goes into Canada, delineating, it's almost like an alpha uh, the the Marvel Canadian team Alpha Strike or whatever they're called. Um, I was I was never I, I don't know I'm never real big I I don't dislike Canada, <laughs> but I just never really got into their their supers except of course for Wolverine. Um, big Thunder Miss Canada. Uh, Chris the opportunist Cage and so forth, and it's got it's got their supers. Uh, they're, they're cramming a lot into this book, which is the more information, the better. But the, uh, the heroes kind of pay the price for that compression because, not, not really, because it's just a smaller, uh, like here on page 26, it's got the cyber Viking. And uh, that, that guy, you know, it's just a small, it's not like Hero High where they had the, all the heroes had a full page and and so forth. Uh, this one has, you know, the Cyber Viking is a small snippet, as you can see here. Um, and then it's got the, the stats for uh, Robot Vikings and the Cyber Viking longship, et cetera, and so forth. Uh, then uh, Dominion, and they don't all have a full page because the heroes aren't the... The heroes and the villains are not the focus of this book. It's not a rogues gallery. They are simply the, this, this, these are the heroes that are in this region, which is, which is fine. Then it's got, of course, then it goes to Mexico and all of the uh, heroes, Baron Samedi, yeah boy. Uh, that's a, if you play Smite, you might know Baron Samedi. 
So each of the each of the regions have their own very distinct supers. All of the regions have their very a knight of Malta. That's cool. Uh, I've I haven't looked in this book for, in a while, and uh, so I'm just kind of getting myself refamiliar. Uh, the Tarask. <laughs> is a, uh, I'm assuming, a villain who is... Where is this guy? Uh, Paris? Oh, they are French villains and heroes. En cure, magnanique of man. Oh, Tarasque. Melutine, mon dieu. So, Tarasque is apparently French. <laughs> so... <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, all right, that's fine. Then you have Central Europe and so forth, and all of the all of the regions are uh, very nicely delineated. East Asia and so forth. The Kaiju Island, which of course you know Skull Island, Hong Kong, so forth. Um, brutal things it says. Enormous brutal things rule this place. The Kaiju. Unison has been aware of the island since 1976. So it it's basically a book of ideas where you can immerse yourself into the planet Earth, not have to come up with some fantasy thing. You could even you could totally use like Google Earth for your maps, right? And uh, which I've done on many occasions. There there are some places in there are some locations in China that are completely unfamiliar to my players since they we don't live in China. And uh, there, there are some places in China that have really medieval feeling, and I'm not saying, you know, I'm not casting any aspersions on, uh, on China or their whatever. I mean, that's all political and I'm, I don't do politics. But there are some locations that have very medieval feel to the landscape and the layout, the, the civil engineering in China is uh, is very interesting, especially in and around, around these serpentine, these ancient, ancient serpentine rivers and, and streams, you know, because the older a river is, the more it, the more it's serpentine because of silt deposits and it builds up on one side and tears away from the other and then it gets, you know, young river is straight, old geology maxims and uh, so they have to do some very interesting things to keep these buildings afloat without making them float uh, um, in and around these these uh, ancient rivers so I believe this is and and you know I, I know I've, I've been doing reviews for a while uh, quite a long time actually and I, I've never really given it much thought until I started noticing that the reviews I'm doing of late are all five star, five axes, right? Not stars. I got to stop doing that. All five axes. Uh, so I think I'm concentrating more on why they're getting five axes and, and making my reviews more of a, of a semblance of uh, why you should have this book? Why? Why is this a must book? Because I don't really review anything bad. I, I've I've done so in the past, and I've I've uh, I've gotten some feedback on it. Which you know, whatever. Everybody everybody has their own preferences. Like there was a, a, a one particular book in my list of reviews that I that I really really didn't like, and you know, the people were climbing all over me. How dare you? That's my favorite book. And it's like, that's fine. I don't care. It's not mine. It's yours. It's fine. You continue playing it, please, by all means. I do not, I do not judge. I mean, being, being a teacher, you can't really judge. I know there's a really weird political climate with teachers and indoctrination these days, but I was never one of those. And uh, my beliefs are mine and yours are yours. And that's fantastic. That's what makes this country great is that everybody can have their own views and not have to worry or you know back in the old days you didn't have to worry about repercussions because of your views much there were there were there were always been biases and prejudices blah 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 but I was never one of those so uh, what I'm saying my point I think if I could ever get to it is that 
Uh, everybody has the right to their own opinions. And this is all of the books that I've done in the in the past quite a while ha have been books that I believe are a must have for your library and and why they are and I, this is definitely one of them if you're if you are a mutants and masterminds fan if you play the game and I am going to be doing some uh, some videos in the very near future which uh, I had some folks ask me. Uh, how you calculate damage because Mutants of Mastermind is so completely different that it doesn't actually use hit points um, and that. And so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do some reviews, uh, or not, I'm going I'm to do some videos about that and why, uh, how, you know, how the, the process works, how to roll up a character and so forth. So there's that. And then we have a, uh, an appendix in the back about what uh, the characters by power level and for instance, on page 237, we have a character named the Subterran. Where is this guy? The Subterran is a Subterran, is a power level one, strongly motivated, they're servile, so they're basically the minions of the Terran King, or the Subterran King, Morlocks, and so forth. And then here, let's see. On page 239, which I should have kept that open because it was just right there, is the power level, one of the four power level 14 guys in this book called the Gigantosaur, which, you know, if you think that's a hokey name, you can tell him or her, no matter. Uh, the origin of the creature known as Gigantosaur, the Gig Gigantosaur remains a mystery. It first arose from the ocean where it is known to live. Nuclear tests at sea, so it's like an analog for, uh, for you know, Godzilla. Gozira. So this name. Nuclear tests at sea may have spawned it. Blah, blah, blah. So, and then it has, of course, it's got the stats for all these guys, which is, which is always very helpful. And then it has an atlas of Earth Prime archetype characters by power level. And it's got a list of what they are, which is very cool. And then, of course, the index and the, op the uh, license agreement and so forth. The open game license, as it were. So, um, hats off to the dudes at Green Ronin for this completely necessary book. And uh, it gets five axes, of course, for me, which it's not a rare thing, but my reviews, I don't review absolutely everything. I only review the, the very best, apparently, which uh, now, uh, as I was saying before, I'm not doing it because I don't want to hear any negative comments. You're always free to comment what you will, but... Uh, uh, I like I like being positive, and I like I don't like filling I don't want to fill my bookshelves with crap, right? So these are the best of the best, and this is another five acts best from Mutants and Masterminds called uh, the Atlas of Earth Prime. It goes for forty four ninety five, and you can find it at Green Ronin uh, Publishing or GreenRonin dot com and Mutants and Masterminds dot com, or any fine bookstore that sells this book. You can find this book where they sell this book. And on that happy note, on behalf of the entire cast and crew of the Dwarven Tavern, I am Dr. Jeff Mullins, your host, wishing for you to want for nothing but adventure. And at first I feared it, these guys, and then I charged and whooped them all. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.